Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Geekism Studios. It's been about a week uh, as I've had a few days away, a few days out of town um, and I just couldn't sit down and play Planko unfortunately but I'm happy to be back and uh, here we are working on the Subnautica ride actually. I d I'm doing a little bit of work here, um, literally just I looked at it and felt like that side was a bit flat so I did a little bit of work. Anyway, uh, this video pretty much exclusively now then is going to be Subnautica ride and we get a real good chunk of it done. I think one more episode episode and it'll be done and they're also uh, I'm tr I want to try and keep a few little surprises in there for you as well to be honest with you for when we do the sort of POV at the end so there are going to be a few bits that I probably end up doing off camera um, but it's all starting to come together now I've got a narrative in my head for the ride and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you a lot of the narrative is going to come through uh, an audio track that's going to play with the ride so uh, these parts might look a little bit sort of mix and match but um, yeah, they, it kind of will all make sense uh, in the end. I've got a, a plan in my head. Uh, and one of uh, the parts of the story is going to be that we enter a cave system. So it's going to be after the... Um after the, uh, the the gasopod there gives us a squirt of, with with his party balls, we're going to um, we're going to head through the uh, the kelp zone. Uh, not the blood kelp one, the, the the green one. I forget. I'm so bad with names. There's a big green plant that lights up. It was yellow plant, isn't it? I got told off of doing it, making it green. A yellow plant that lights up, um, that the stalkers hang around, and uh, and then we're going to head into a cave system that looks out onto the uh, the grassy plateau, uh, which is what we're doing here. Uh, although I'm actually going to go back and redo this. So so this is again a problem with my color blindness. It, it seems to crop up quite a bit lately, um, and that is that this is called the red floral brush, and I thought the whole thing was red. And I was like, oh perfect, there's red grass in in the grassy plateau. I can use this. And uh, and then Nicola came in and said, no, no, it's green. We'd like little red flowers on it. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but apparently one of the other flowers is a little bit better um, for the color. You can only change the color of a few of them, unfortunately. But there is one of the uh, the smaller bushes that has long flowers on it. If you change the flowers to red and pull them down into the ground, but they look pretty good. But I, I've just realised now, looking at this video, I didn't go back and fix that. Um, so I will do that. Um, so yeah, this is meant to be the uh, grassy plateau. If you've played some Nautica, uh, lots of uh, sort of deserty style rock, very light rock, and this sort of blood blood red planting almost. And then here is uh, where most people in the game will experience their first reaper, uh, either usually hanging around the back of the Aurora uh, wreck. Uh, which I thought would be a perfect time to throw it into the game here, uh, into the ride even, and give us a cool uh, little jump scare. I want the ride to be quite positive, you see, so so the, it's not going to be the last thing that happens is the big jump scare. I want it to happen earlier on and then to be more of like an adventure ride, you know, like a try and go escape the Reaper. And I feel like the ending is actually going to be quite uh, quite sweet. Uh, here we're making up some of the creep vines, that's the word I was looking for before. We're making up some creep vines. We've got a couple of them already, but I wanted some variations with them because uh, one thing about the creep vines is the game is that they're very thick and dense. Um, it was like a forest of them almost, so I want us to get that uh, feeling of moving through the forest into the next area. The one thing I've struggled with the most uh, building this ride, and the one thing I imagine they struggle with the most in real life building this kind of ride, is transitioning between the areas and uh, being able, be making it so that you can only see one bit at a time. And um, it's really, really quite tricky to do. And I probably with a bit more time, I could think about it. But uh, at the moment, I kind of struggle. And I've realised that sort of making these walls of, of rock, you know, and, and and planting and things like that kind of work really well um yeah i'd love i'd love if anyone out there has got experience with this kind of thing i don't know maybe you've operated a dark ride or, or or just that you're quite involved with them quite into them and you've got some plans or something like that to share that'd be really cool because i just i'd love to see how they tackle the um the sort of transitional areas and also transitioning onto these screens as well now i know i talked a little bit with silver about this actually saying how difficult it was um to make it so that you don't really notice the edge of the screen and you just sort of blend into it uh, and he's ridden the forbidden uh, journey in, in in orlando and he said well even on that you can kind of tell so don't worry about it too much because in real life you can tell so <laughs> um which is a fair point you kind of can so i've tried my hardest to make all this seamless but you know occasionally you're going to see a light, occasionally you're going to see a little bit of edging, occasionally you're going to see a bit of the back wall where the fire exit is, that kind of thing, you know, but as he pointed out, and also I think I've mentioned in videos before, 
you can see these things in real life you know even even the real top end stuff like a disney and universal if you look hard enough you can you can see the rough edges and um so that's uh, something that we're gonna have to sort of kind of accept and take on board you know so we've got three of these larger uh these omni omni I don't know what they're called, parabolic screens, that's it. I keep calling them Omni something for some reason, I don't know why. But yeah, these parabolic screens. So the first one is going to be a Reaper jump scare. The second one, I'm still not 100% sure, the second one's going to be a transition between the... Um, uh, the oh, let me try and think of the name of the place now. Not the Blood Kelp Zone, the Grand, the Grand Reef, the one with the big floaty uh, light-up uh, things that are dragged down by vines, those. And then uh, into the, the Lava Zone. Um, I really want to do the lava zone for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of the last major area you get to in the game. Um, and also we have some awesome lava uh, special effects that we just, we've never used. They came with the adventure pack and we've just never really had a use for them because, uh, you know, they're well over the budget of Pinewood. So um, that's kind of two double reasons why I wanted to kind of do that. Lots of me riding through here and, and seeing how everything looks because one thing I realised after building that first bit was that I built the whole thing a little bit too close to the, um, to the actual... Uh, train the, the car um, and it was kind of un, un, unseeable really you couldn't see what was going on so so here I'm making sure that everything is uh, as decent distance and also again trying to figure out how to sort of make areas a little less prominent until they're needed so here this green kelp area we uh, light up and as you go through it it lights up very difficult to see here I'm not going to do a, another POV until the ride's finished uh, there we obviously you'll get glimpses of it as we, uh, you know, as we as we build it here, and, and we'll and I'll show some glamour shots at the end, but I'm going to keep the POV uh, now until the end. And what I'm going to do is um, I'll do a, a single POV separate video where there's literally just a ride through, and then I'll also be doing a little behind the scenes video, um, and that's actually going to be for um, more for Subnautica fans, to be honest with you, because I actually put that I was building this on the Subnautica Reddit. Uh, and it did pretty well and everyone was quite interested and, and would like to see more of it so when it's finished I'm going to be doing a, a POV of the ride and then a little overview of the ride sort of like from this kind of angle showing what's going on uh, showing how it was put together uh, uh, but I'm going to be talking as if they haven't really played Planet Coaster so obviously you know you're welcome to watch <laughs> uh, but I'll be uh, uh, yeah it'll be more for uh, sort of not non Planko players to, to kind of figure out what the hell has been made here and, and some of the limitations of the game you know uh, so here I'm building a Seamoth. Uh, there was one on the workshop, it's just there on the left. It's pretty good. Um, didn't use very many pieces and was a little bit too simple. I kind of placed it in and it, it, it's pretty. It's good. It's got a great shape to it and it uses one of the uh, the engine pieces that I try and use here and just can't really get to work because it's uh, because of the size difference I'm doing here. But it just didn't quite have the detail I wanted it to have. So, excuse me. So, um, here I'm looking through all these to see if there's a slightly smaller one, but there isn't. It's, it's this or nothing. And like I say, because I'm building on a slightly more elongated scale, it just didn't really, uh, didn't really get going. So uh, it took me a little while to to get this till I was happy with it, really. Um, originally I put glass pieces there, you'll see, and tried to make a, a dome with them. Unfortunately, it's just, yeah, it didn't look great. So uh, in the end, I remembered that we actually have got a glass dome in the game, although it's a little bit limiting. It's this Dragula thing here from the Monsters DLC. I actually used this already. I used it in Pinewood Hills as a, uh, uh, as a telephone um, uh, cover for, for a public telephone. And uh, I'm using it again here. If they showed me all the pieces in the game and asked me which one I would never use, I'd probably pick this, but I've now, I've now got a, a fairly decent use for it twice. Uh, it does mean, however, that there is that sort of yellow, I suppose like a yellowy type colour. Because um, I, I, I try my hardest to cover it up as best I can. Uh, but unfortunately, you, you do see a little bit of it. And I don't know, let me know. Yay or nay, delete it and just have it open or keep it. Does it add that much? Maybe not. In the dark? Maybe not. I don't know. Well, yeah, let me know what you think about that one, please, in the comments. Uh, so here we are doing a little bit of detailing. There's um, The actual Seamoth has this sort of like orange and white uh, little sort of uh, radar thing on the back, which is I've used there. And then there's a couple of little vents of them here. I suppose the idea is that the water goes in through them and then out this, uh, this thing at the back. So we had a little bit of air. Uh, 
<sighs> she's standing there. Sorry, I know I said I was going to try not to yawn in videos, but I've had a very long week and I really wanted to come back and get a Planet Coaster video out for you. So I've been playing this all day pretty much. Uh, it's now, it's only 9 pm actually. It's just, it's been a long day. Like, I could do the good lying and the, there isn't one in the future for me, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so there we go. It turns out pretty nice. I'm going to now stick it on a bit of an angle. Because what, what this is uh, going to be part of the story here that this has crashed, um, and it's uh, the reason is so. The, okay, let me talk about the, yeah, the the rough idea of the story then. So the idea is that I think I mentioned this before as well in previous episodes. Uh, at the end of Subnautica, spoiler alert by the way, if you don't want to know what happens at the end of Subnautica, turn the radio down for thirty seconds. Um, the end of Subnautica, you you manage to leave the planet and uh, head back home, and uh, the company that you work for, uh, Altira, they they're very money driven, very sort of uh, money conscious. Uh, so when you get back home, um, I can only imagine that you go and talk to your bosses, you're going to talk to your you know, people and tell them what's happened and tell them that there's this enzyme that pretty much cures any problem uh, with people and obviously they want to go and send up people to go and get hold of this and they would do that um, if they're sending ships there back and forth, why wouldn't they have tourists? So it's a little bit like Star Tours, the idea is that now this is a tourist uh, destination, come and see the fabled planet 4546B that's... Uh, that you know houses this enzyme or whatever so you come down here and just like star tours you go a little bit off course and obviously you get end up attacked by a reaper and uh, and go further and further and it's up to the uh, the creatures of the planet itself to help you get back home that's all i'm going to say uh, so this is um the next bit then i think i think it's the great the grand Pla no not the grand plateau the grand reef this bit is uh, these huge blue uh glowing orbs that are sort of got floating with vines holding them down really really nice looking thing they are and um it took me a little while to figure out how to sort of replicate them in the game uh, but in the end this art shape covered in some gems and some uh turned inside out plants and some rope i think it's turned out relatively well if you again i've said this before if you know the game you probably have a good idea of what they're meant to be if you don't know the game, they look like crazy alien plants, and that's exactly what they are. So overall, I think it's um, worked out pretty pretty well. We're going to copy that around, and uh, this is going to be the next area. So like I say, you head, head down into here and find another one of your ships um, uh, crashed and, and uh, no, uh, no, no survivors of note, which again harks back to the game. That's pretty much all you... <laughs> All you spend the game doing is finding dead empty ships with nobody in them. Uh, here we'll find a little pedestal. It's on. It started off a little bit too low. Again, with these things, you've got to constantly ride them and, and go through and and, uh, and 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 make sure that they look good from the uh, from the point of view. Now, I was going to put flames down here. <laughs> um, they realised my mistake, <laughs> so I didn't put some electricity. Although they do have in the game. There are there are electricity like that, sort of electrical sparks, and also lava underwater. So they 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 take a little bit of a of a liability, and and, and we're going to do the same, obviously, because we're basing our, our ride on the game. Uh, the big art shapes there on the left, by the way, they they were they were to to check some um, line of sight. Uh, I actually replaced them here with um, some stones, just doing a save there because I was doing some three D gizmo stuff. A few people have been telling me that they've had some problems since the uh, the most recent update to Lady Designer and uh, Rudy and uh, a couple of, a few other people on my Discord have said that the game is running uh, like poo ever since 1.6.2 I guess it was, the little update we had recently. Um, luckily I have no problems myself but I'm, I'm sure and hoping that Frontier are working on a fix for people because there's nothing worse than not being able to get in to play the game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I hope they uh, they get that sorted soon. These uh, art panels, these are basically going to make up the uh, the sort of crux of the inside. Really, when it's dark, you can't really see them. They soak up a lot of light, and uh, you can see now. Even though that was a really quick run through, you get a bit of an idea of how the thing is starting to fit together, and how these uh, things here are starting to um, you know sort of break up areas. One thing I'm not doing is going to the uh, amount of realism in that there are no sort of fire exits here, there are no walkthroughs for staff. Um, w once you head into here, you, you know it's it's purely to make the uh, the the view from the screen look good, as in the point of view. I have no interest in making it, you know, because what would really happen is there would be a walkthrough of this in the, usually like through the middle. Uh, the whole ride is like a U-shape, the whole ride is like a circle, and then in the middle there's an area. You, you, yeah, you get a bit of a good idea of the, of the 
right there look uh, an area that you can walk through and open up and get into when the lights all come on and this thing's broken and we have to evacuate people uh, we're not doing any of that here it's uh, it is what it is uh, right moving on now to tweak a little bit of um the stuff we've already done before we start moving on the next section which is the lava like i said we get quite a bit done here the main thing left to do is the last uh, the last little bit the last sort of area and um and uh, also the, um, the the few screens still to do as well because they they they're a little bit trickier. What I'm having to do, uh, for instance, that Reaper one there is go into the game, find roughly an area that I want to be in, uh, and then there are lots of different uh, I was gonna say cheat codes, but they call them like uh, command line. Uh, you know, like dev dev codes. As if you ever remember playing the original Sims, and you could get that little text box up, and you could type Kaporcius was it or something like that to get a thousand, and then Rosebud later on, and things like that. Uh, basically, you can do that, so you can spawn in items. I kind of wish I knew about it while I was playing the game because it would have been very handy a few times. <laughs> uh, but you can spawn different, any item in the game basically, and obviously any creature as well. So uh, I went headed over to the uh, the grassy plateau and then spawned a Leviathan in, and then spent a little while sort of winded it up basically so it would come and attack me um, and then uh, record the footage throw that footage into Premiere Pro uh, make it a square because these these uh, these circular screens obviously work best with squares and they're cropping it a little bit so that you can't actually see the ship itself which does make it a little bit zoomed in to be honest with you I would like to pull back a little bit but it doesn't work properly when you can see the the sea bath I don't think because it suddenly appears out of nowhere it, it doesn't really make sense although uh, as far as the lore of the ride goes you probably would be in some sort of structure the fact that you can't always see it um, is a little bit weird if you know we ever ended up getting custom assets for for these kind of rides i would make it you know look a little bit more like an actual seam off um but yeah we don't have that so it zooms in a little bit and then also you have to kind of make the footage a little bit um like bulbous almost like a fish eye um because the game uh, because the, because it's a concave screen concave convex i'm never quite sure of the difference no it's concave isn't it because it's concave screen it sort of kind of pulls the uh, the edges of the screen um, so you have to kind of overcompensate that by by stretching the middle and it, it still looks a little bit distorted but I think it looks about as good as we can get it or a, at least as good as I'm getting, willing to sit and try and get it <laughs> um, here we've got I wonder if we wanted the sort of um, the, 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 the car itself to do a full turn here and kind of almost come back on itself although it did mean there you can see perfectly you can see the screen through the gap there so instead we added some steam and obviously when it's dark that works pretty well of covering up that uh, that screen there so I guess it's uh, that's the sort of thing you have to think about uh, the most with these kind of rides it's these these sort of line of sights um, it really do, you know it makes or breaks the, the, the difference between a, big, between a really good experience and not in real life so uh, it is something we are trying to take into account as best we can uh, using these awesome magma walls here, I probably overdo these a little bit to be honest but I think they look awesome so I don't care <laughs> and also it's really quite tricky to do uh, you know, because it's it's open sea, so so really, what should happen is that you just you can just see into the distance until you can't see anymore using you know because of fog. Um, but unfortunately, we can't do that, so we kind of have to close it in a little bit. Uh, maybe I might look at adding a screen in that in that lava area. Haven't actually got one. The idea was that it would go screen, practical effect, screen, practical effect, and so on and so on. So we've got originally the uh, the gasopod screen, then we've got the gasopod practical effect and the, and the uh, kelp forest uh, uh, effect, and then we've got the screens showing the reaper, and then we've got the practical effect of the sea moth that's crashed, and then we have another screen showing, I think it's going to be uh, the electric one, I forget which one that is. There's an electric one, uh, which is quite cool, and then uh, the practical effects of the lava, and then the the finale, which I'm not going to spoil. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of the plan in my head. Uh, here we're just kind of syncing these up so they're ready for the for the uh, the footage when we get to them. And uh, and then uh, just having a little tweak here with some lighting and just kind of having a look at the thing. Really, I'm having a look there, see what I can do about it. I've decided there isn't anything I can do about it. Um, so yeah, just doing a bit of a lighting pass here, just kind of having a look around some of the options really weird thing there you can see that for some reason this building is i think it's french like i don't really get it um normally it says edit building number 8163 or whatever it is but for some reason this one says edit Brug i can't really see it here because it's on the small monitor while i'm uh, editing 
but edit French word six. <laughs> I say French word, it might not be French, I don't know. It sounds French. Battlement, I think it is. Um, which I assume is like battlement. It comes like building battlement, that kind of thing. I don't know. It's a bit random anyway. Sorry, there was a gap there. I think Nicola came in and I was, I was chatting to her a little bit. And then I think I go through and show her what I did. Um, which is, so it might be a little bit uh, random here. This bit, I'm really struggling at connecting up here. This, uh, this gap here. I try using some lava, but then you can see the lava on the other side. I try using some thin lava, but again, you can see the thin lava on the other side. So, yeah, I need a little bit of a bit of a tweak there. I think uh, trigger again just to get that last trigger done, and then we start working on the final piece here, which is um, kind of tells you a little bit more about the story that we're going to do. Uh, this is one of the uh, the alien uh, portals. So in the game, you can find these portals that you have to open up using. Uh, uh, tablets, uh, you find these sort of ancient tablets and they work like keys and the portals open up and, and uh, the portals do a range of things. One, they kind of advance the story, uh, but two, they also work as a bit more of like a fast pass, uh, you know, fast sort of fast track kind of thing. Um, and they, uh, they're all these, they're very dark. Uh, all the alien technology in the game is this very dark sort of grey green colour with a very very light green accent so uh, i went through the game and grabbed uh, some hex codes from it and used them here they look a little washed out in blanco i think because of the because of the pieces i'm using but i actually think it works quite well and i think they look pretty smart especially when it's dark it looks really good so what we're using is um is the uh the art shapes and then a combination of art shapes and the uh sci-fi pieces there which lend themselves so well to this because it's pretty much exactly how they look in the game. I did originally, I cut, I ended up cutting the footage, so I did originally try and make the shapes out of their art shapes, but just these things, they, they look almost perfect. The only thing I wish I could do is the little white lights on them. It'd be great to be able to colour those because I would make them this green colour, but I think overall, once I've added in these um, these neon signs that we're doing here with that with the lighter green, I think, they, I think it looks really, really good. It pretty much almost looks... <laughs> uh, like the in-game one. I have to have a little redo at this because the the original one I make is, uh, as you'll see in a second, is very uh, uh, elongated <laughs> uh, and they only just fit through so I actually go back in a moment and, and redo it and also I, I really fight with myself here, really really fight with myself about whether or not it's that important that the ride itself doesn't clip through the scenery because really I would like the portal to be complete like this um, but then you know, I did that with the the light speed bit, and uh, people kicked off. So, yeah, I don't know. I under, I can I can see kind of see the best of both parts. Really, I kind of get the you know the realism aspects, but I kind of also get the just let's just make a really good POV aspect as well. So, yeah, I'm really not sure to be honest. Um, and again, answers on a postcard down below. There we go. So there's the redo of it. Uh, what I want to do now is trying to come up with the best ways of making it look like an actual portal. So, the, so in the game it uses it, this is a big green swirly thing. I think that probably the closest we can get to it uh, is using the uh, the new colourable smoke. Uh, unfortunately the uh, the colourable smoke or any smoke or any special effects in the fact for the uh, the game doesn't really work that well from a POV point of view. The, uh, the particles disappear when you get pretty close to them so Maybe for the POV, I might actually even look at using a billboard, and we'll just clip through the billboard. Um, but as far as the ride goes, here is uh, is what it ends up looking like, and I actually think it works pretty well. And again, it's the sort of thing you would actually see in a real ride. Um, they often use this uh, these sort of mist misters that uh, they project onto. So that that is what I imagine this would be like, really. Here it's just like I say, big green smoke. But um, if you look at something like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, I know it's a bit controversial that they did it, but they read went they went back and redid it with some scenes from uh, from the movies. And one of the things they do is they have this uh, this mist curtain where they uh, project a um, a video of uh, Jeffrey Rush. I want to say is it? I think guy played Barbosa. Uh, very cool. Anyway, it looks really good. So um, and and obviously it's used to create fire effects as well. I think the mummy uses some of it, like a mist effect with uh, lots of sort of yellows and oranges projected onto it, and it gets a, it gets a really good effect of a uh, fire. Uh, that's the other option probably here is to use a flame the flamethrower effect, but it'd be the wrong color. I don't. We have colorable fire, but only the larger panels. We don't have the uh, sort of focused flame. And here we go. Some uh, glamour shots of the new areas. Then we start off with those. Um, green things that I've already forgot the name of and then we come round into our first uh, army screen look at that looks pretty good doesn't it even from there it looks pretty good 
uh, into the uh, the Grand Reef, I think it's called, and the crashed sea moth. Still, lots of work to do in areas. You can still see green floor, and all that's gonna you know be changed, and then into the lava area again. Not 100% sure what I want to do here, really. Um, and then uh, finally they head through the gate. Still got to turn the uh, the angle around there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. It really does help at the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can pop them down in the comments. And if you fancy chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.